He chose me to go and receive Him and cry out to search and to hear. And teach us not to repent. Teach Him not to sin. He chose me. He chose me. Yes, He did. Yes, He did. Seeking and reaching and teaching. All right, so this question right here real quick is uh, it's, uh, comparing Ezekiel 16 and 10 to uh, 1 Peter uh, 3. So it's, you know, it's talking about uh, us being beautiful. And then it says a Christian pulled 1 Peter 3 and 30 on me. I can tell you right now, uh, whatever that Christian was, one of two things. They was a seven-day Adventist. <laughs> or a Jehovah Witness. That's the two uh, white man religions that say you women got to look like ancient mama. Those two. Can't have no earrings, no nothing. I answer that too. Yeah. Uh, but let's go to Ezekiel 16 and 10. Let's answer that real quick. And uh, we'll see. We'll read that. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 10. I clothe thee also with broidered work, and shewed thee with badger skin. And I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Uh -huh. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead, an earring in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, uh -huh. and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So this is how when we was in our glory, when we was in our right mind, knew that we was Israel, keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments, this is how we walked around on an everyday basis. When, um, who was that? Christopher Columbus, right? When he got to this side of the world, when he seen Gad and, and Ephraim and all of them, he said, they got diamonds in their clothes. Right. They played with them like marbles. So to dress like this, it, wasn't, and it was nothing to us. This is how we dressed on an everyday basis as a nation. Go to Jeremiah 6, I think it is. Yeah, I'm Jeremiah sure. 6 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So whenever we read about things like this or the Most High is comparing uh, a beautiful woman, he's talking about Israel. That's how he sees us, as a beautiful and delicate woman. So that's why it says, uh, uh, Paul says all the time that I am preparing you as a bride adorned for Christ. Because that bride of being adorned is the nation of Israel, being prepared. Um, so whenever you, you see things like this, the Most High is describing a woman. Because that's how he sees us as a nation, as a beautiful and delicate woman. And this is how we dressed on a regular, as a people, right? So uh, go to, I'm going to show you this, uh, Judith, right? Let's go to Judith and show you that this is how we dress. Judith chapter 10, start at verse 1. It's page 50 in the red apocrypha. Judith chapter 10 and verse 1. Now after that she had ceased, ceased to cry unto the God of Israel and had made an end of all these words, she rose where she, where she had fallen down and called her maid and went down into the house in the which she abode in the Sabbath days and in her feast days and pulled off the sackcloth which she had on. So we read where she had on sackcloth because she was in a state of, of mourning. She was mourning for her people. This is during the time of when uh, the commander Holofernes was trying to find out about the people down there in Canaan. He was sent by Nebuchadnezzar, things like that. Uh, you can read up on the history. It's during the Babylon, right in between there. Uh, read on. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on and put off the garments of her widowhood, uh -huh. and washed her body all over with water, yeah. and anointed herself with precious ointment, and braided the hair of her head. Braided the hair of her head, read on. And put on a tire upon it. That's talking about a head wrap. Read on. 
and put on her garments of gladness, uh -huh. wherewith she was glad during the life of Manessus, her husband. So when her husband was alive, this is how she dressed on an everyday basis. This is how she walked around. Verse 4. And she took sandals upon her feet and put about her and put about her her bracelets. She put on her what? Her bracelets. We read that in Ezekiel 16. Read on. And her chain. We read that in Ezekiel 10. And her rings. We read that in Ezekiel 10. And her earrings. We read that. And all her ornaments. We read that in Ezekiel. And decked herself bravely uh -huh. to allure the eyes of all men that should see her. So she put on all of those things. Go back to Ezekiel 16. Now, let's read that again. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 10. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shoed thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, uh -huh. and I put bracelets upon thine hands, uh -huh. and a chain on thy neck, Read that. and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. And thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So, um, what we read in here is what the comparison of Judith and Ezekiel 16 is nothing wrong with dressing beautiful because Judith was obviously a righteous woman. She got a book in the Bible written after what she done. She was a righteous sister, kept the commandments, she feared the Lord all the days of her life. So where did the problem of dressing like that come in at Isaiah. This is where the problem of dressing like that came in. So Isaiah I think is what? Three, right? Let's go to it. This is where it came in. Uh, 3 and 16. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16. Moreover the Lord saith, because the daughter of Zion, sorry, because of the daughters of Zion are haughty, proud, and walk with stretch forth nets. Can't tell me nothing. And wanting eyes, walking and mincing as they go. Look at me. And making a tinkling with her with their feet. Uh -huh. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. You're gonna be bald headed buying other people's hair. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. He's gonna make he gonna be buying modest at seven. And that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments. The beauty, the bravery, the beauty of their tinkling ornaments. So now let's read how they dressed. Read on. About their feet and their coals and their round tires like the moon. That's that head wrap. They wrap it like a tire. Read on. The chains uh -huh. and the bracelets yep. and the mufflers and the bonnets. Bonnets. And the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and of the headbands and the tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins. That wimples and mantles, all of that is uh, when you look up that, uh, what is that stuff called? Uh, uh, oh, medieval, medieval yeah, type stuff. The, the hoods, where they right, throw over yeah. the hoods on them, and they got the cape walking behind them. What's the dude's name that, uh, it's the little marble dude? Arrow? Green arrow, Green arrow, right? Green arrow, Green arrow. we yeah. throw the thing over, you got the little cape right. and all of that. That came from us. They got that from us. They done stole your style and incorporated to where you think it belongs to Esau whenever you see it on TV. No, no, that came from us. Uh, Samuel hit one of those things up. That's what Saul grabbed and tore when he turned to walk away from him. Read on. And the crispy pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hood, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of uh, instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. Gonna be in the clinic, is what Lewis said. And why why is he taking away all of that beautiful stuff that he gave us? Go back up to verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith. Because the daughters of Zion are haughty. They was proud. They was, this is what they was based off of. This was the only thing that they was worried about. How I look. They weren't worried about nothing that was going on in here. They spirit with the Lord, keeping the commandments. That was the furthest thing from their mind. As long as I look pretty, that's all that matters. That was the problem with dressing 
beautiful like that. Now, let's go to 1 Peter 3 now. Mm -hmm. This is what Peter is recalling right here. Mm -hmm. 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, no, let's start at verse 1. Good. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. He had to say that because our sisters from time past, they was haughty, walked with uh, stretched forth necks. They didn't want to hear nobody. It's my way. I do what I want to do. Like it says in Jeremiah, we shall not hearken unto thy words. We shall do whatever will come forth out of our mouth. That's Jeremiah 44, I think it is. Somewhere around there. But that's what he's recalling. Because remember, everything written aforetime is written for our what? Our learning. our learning. So this is where Peter's pulling from. So likewise, you wise, be in subjection. Stop being all proud. Walking with stress for next. Humble yourself down. Read on. Be in subjection to your own husband. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wise. So even if you have a husband that don't believe, if he sees the change in you, that from this Bible, the words of God have changed you from that nigga woman, that loud woman, that is my way to highway woman, then he can be won over with the word of God. Read on. Why they behold your chaste conversation uh -huh. coupled with fear. Now, here goes the point. Verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair. So don't let it be just your physical, is what Peter's saying. Because your ancestors before, in Isaiah 3.16, the only thing they was worried about, how I look. Read on. And of wearing of gold, uh -huh. or of putting on of apparel. Uh -huh. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. That hidden man of the heart is Jesus Christ. You can't see him. He's the spirit that dwells in us that is supposed to show in us. Read on. And that which is not corruptible, uh -huh. even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Go to um, Sirach. I'm going to show you something real quick. I think it's uh, 36, 22, 23. So, so there's nothing wrong with dressing beautiful coming into this truth. You're supposed to let your light so shine that your sisters that are in darkness may see that light come in and repent. Read on. Sirach chapter 36 verse 22. The beauty of a woman cheereth the continents and a man loveth nothing better. So there's nothing wrong with being beautiful. Man love a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. That's right. Read on. If there be kindness, if small letter, big meaning, if we love beautiful women, if there be what? Kindness, uh -huh. meekness, uh -huh. and comfort in her tongue, uh -huh. then is not her husband like other men? So is nothing wrong with dressing beautiful. Nothing wrong with letting your light shine. The problem comes when that's all you're about. You got a nasty attitude, hateful, envy, all of that type of stuff. That's where the problem lies in with dressing beautiful. Not that you can't dress beautiful. Supposed to walk around looking ugly. No, 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 no. No, not at all. We're the most beautiful people on the face of the planet. That's right. And guess who we look like? Our dad. That's right. We're going to let that thing show. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.